And let's dive straight in tonight with Ukraine, where it has been a truly grim week. And yet, Ukrainian citizens have continued to show incredible signs of resistance, proving that they truly are the fuck-around-and-find-out country of Eastern Europe. Shmatko is a grandmother and a retired economist. These are the only weapons she has, but she says she's ready to fight. Let those Russian shits come here, she says. We are ready to greet them. Do you have a message for President Putin? Putin. It's a popular sentiment on the streets. This man's sign is too vulgar to translate. Oh, is it? Well, we might actually be able to help you there, because this is the network that airs shows about high schoolers doing heroin and hosting orgies before homeroom, so <laughs> we have no such problems. So I can tell you that that song translates to Putin is a dickhead, which <laughs> he clearly very much is. Also, it is notable that dickhead was too vulgar for CNN, but Molotov grandma got to say, let those Russian shits come <laughs> with no problem. It seems that she is above the law, as she should be. <laughs> Ukrainians' defiance and sense of humour in the midst of such a brutal, outmatched fight has understandably captured the world's imagination, although what some have chosen to do with that imagination has left a little to be desired. To me, Zelensky is a cross between Churchill and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, he's just incredible. Just such a great story slash maybe one day a movie. And people were quick to cast the film on Twitter, saying Jeremy Renner would make the perfect Zelensky. However... The backlash to that was way too early. We're in the middle of a, a freaking war here. Yeah, a little insensitive, but whenever it does get made, it's gonna be epic. OK, hold on. Maybe wait for the actual war to end before we start casting the fucking movie. But to be fair, yeah, a little insensitive, but we're going to run with it anyway, is the official motto of TMZ. <laughs> and spare a thought there for Volodymyr Zelensky. He has got enough going on right now without being described as a Jeremy Renner type. That's not a nice thing to say about someone. <laughs> Now, as for Russia, they've responded to worldwide criticism by clamping down hard on dissent at home. Putin just signed a law effectively criminalising any public opposition to or independent news reporting about this war, and authorities have blocked Twitter and Facebook and are threatening to block Wikipedia, which is an outright attack on anyone who has something due tomorrow. The education ministry there even produced a nationwide on online lesson for children featuring a little girl asking questions about what was going on there and getting some spectacular answers. And here, I have a question. Special operation. What does it mean? It's when goals lead to peace. We do not attack residential buildings. We do not hit the civilians. We do not destroy the social infrastructure, kindergartens, schools, water utilities, substations. Except you've literally just done almost all those things. <laughs> Russian strikes have destroyed hospitals, schools and homes. Also, I really don't want to be giving notes to state propaganda, but if you're going to lie to a child's face, maybe cast a less creepy man to do that. <laughs> May I suggest film actor Jeremy Renner? People <laughs> seem to want him involved in this somehow. And yet, despite Russia's efforts to control this narrative, we continue to see public protest there. And some Russian celebrities, politicians, and even a few oligarchs have started cautiously speaking out, which is understandable. Not only is this war morally indefensible, but the impacts of global sanctions are now being felt at every level of Russian society. The economy there is in complete freefall. And just watch the level of despair in this exchange on a Russian financial network. Hello, Alexander. Hello. I won't say good day. Yeah, no one does these days. <laughs> Jokes aside, let's do this quick. I'm sending regards to Sergei Usachenko, who 12 to 13 years ago drank to the death of the stock market. Today, I'm drinking seltzer. Dear stock market, you were close to us, you were interesting to us. Rest in peace, dear comrade. <laughs> wow! That guy toasted the death of the Russian stock market, saying you were close to us, you were interesting to us, and then chugged some seltzer. Which is striking, but also sounds less like how you'd mourn a financial system, and more like how you'd give a eulogy for a clown you don't know all that well personally. <laughs> you were close to us, you were interesting to us. <laughs> Yet for all the Ukrainian resistance and Russian discontent, the fact is Russia is continuing to advance and committing human rights abuses along the way, and it looks like casualties are only going to rise, especially given. After a call with Putin on Thursday, French President Emmanuel Macron was reportedly convinced that Putin wants to seize the whole of Ukraine and that the worst is to come. So sadly, we have no idea what's going to happen next or just how bad.